it wasn't even possible to see an outstretched hand. The ants stayed quiet. Ryan organized everyone into a double sentry watch, keeping the guard in pairs to make sure there was no sleeping. If a dozen or more of the creatures below succeeded in sneaking up the tree under the cover of night, the venom of their bites could be enough to prevent any worthwhile defense. Ryan and Christy took the four hours that ran from early morning to the first pallid hint of the false dawn. Sure, I heard drums again around midnight. Same direction. I think so. Northerly. We make it out of there so we can go take a look. Christy touched Ryan gently on the arm. Just in case we don't. Tomorrow. He reached for Christy's face, finding her lips, and laid his hand across her mouth. No need, beautiful. We both know what we feel about each other. It doesn't take words. If we get chilled in the morning, then it'll likely be quick. But I don't reckon I'm going. Not yet. I've got too much living to do with it. She held his hand and breathed a kiss into his palm. Fair enough. We'll make it together. Like you say, we both got a lot of living still to do. The layers of the night peel back with an imperceptible slowness and subtlety. Ryan suddenly realized that he had caught a faint sparkle from Christie's long red hair. Dawn's coming in. My father was a Baptist minister in a town outside of Montgomery, Alabama, until the Klan burned down his church and him inside it. He taught me how to pray, and this time I guess someone must...